actually, uh, I want to first introduce the uh, technology of the drums. So actually for technology drums, we have five different core technology. The first is that the fly controller, and it is the same as the um, main brain, which can make the drone, make the drone hovering. And also, uh, you can see it's like, it can attitude like stability. And for the second part is actually the propulsion system, which you can see uh, there is like some propellers and also the batteries, which can make the drone fly. And for the third part is actually the remote controller and the image transmission technology. So uh, with this technology, actually you can see the imaging from the drone and also there is like some anti-interference and also uh, to make the imaging clear and smooth. So for the first part is actually for the detect and navigation part. So with these different sensors on the drone, actually you can just uh, fly your drone with uh, some avoid uh, obstacles and also some ability to make it just uh, don't crash and to just uh, don't uh, fly directly on something. So the, fi uh, the fifth part is actually for the gimbal. We have a technology on the gimbal and which can make it no matter how fly attitude is, actually it can be stable to show the video. So with all this technology, actually we use on our uh, different drones like our uh, multi-spectral multi drones and also the agriculture drones and also the delivery drones. So let's see the current regulation and the problems. Uh, the agriculture drone actually is totally different on the policy side, I think, with some um, consumer or enterprise drone. The point is that it's not only for the aviation side to management, but also like there is some um, environmental relative, relative regulations and also some agricultural regulations, which uh, need to be uh, some certification of the spray equipment. So actually, I want to show that how DJI just help farmers to do the compliance with all these regulations. And here is actually for the aviation part. For the EU uh, member, actually you need to do the PDRA. What is a PDRA? It's, it's called Pre-Defined uh, Risk Assessment, which is kind of a simplified SORA, which can just uh, assessment to the risk and also to make it safe and stability. So you can see, uh, actually there, there are five PDRAs in different scenario and uh, four is uh, four about the agricultural works. So actually I think a lot of authorities here have already um, have an have a imagination that in the future actually a lot of agricultural works will happen. So that's why they just make the blanket uh, simple. And here is actually basic on the size and the weight of our drone. Actually, our drone just uh, go into the Sora and into the specific category. And you can see there is, a, a, like last month, there is an update on the PDRA S01. For the previous one, actually there is a limitation on the weight for no more than 25 kilograms, which is just a limitation for the use. But actually, this one just uh, removed the, the weight limitation so that this kind of drone, like uh, T30, which is bigger, can also use the PDRA, which is simpler. So how do DJI help on this? Actually, we made this blanket partly fulfilled, which means that all the things like that's relative to the safety and the reliability, DJI just fulfill all the things. And we just leave the part of the operators. So actually for the spreading scenario, you can see that you can directly use the PDRA and there is no limitation on the chemical product use because you always like spreading some seeds and there is no relevant uh, to the uh, chemical product. And uh, this is actually the scenario in Germany. And you can see this is the mix of different seeds. And we use germs to spread. The point is that 
basically from the traditional scenario when you use the ground machine to do the spreading, there is a problem that because the time is actually very short before the harvest. So actually we can use germ. Before the harvest, you can directly spread all the things into the field. And after that, you do the harvest and the cover crop just grow up. So with a longer time that the cover crop can just grow up, actually you can give the nutrition back to the soil. So that's the point that we just uh, use the drone to do all the things. And there is only aviation side compliance for this scenario. There is no uh, for the agriculture side. And here is actually the standard scenario in Germany. And the LBA just uh, published this. This is a very good thing because I think uh, it's really, really simple to fulfill because it's just a, a small blanket. And you can write the email to the LBA. And you can see here is actually the vineyard in Germany. So uh, they can use the funding side to spray by the drone because this, the spray uh, limitation basically is on the chemical product and also on some flat field. But this is like some somewhere on the mountain and you can directly use it. Our T30 already get the certification from your KIE or JKI, which can directly use the funding side in the vineyard. And let's see uh, other areas. First is the US. In US, FAA just gave us the exemption from the regulation. So basically, actually, you need, uh, as an aircraft, you need uh, airworthiness. But it's a long, long time project and also uh, takes like three to five years. But for the agriculture drone, actually, they think there is a good cost release. So actually, they just think it's OK to use the agriculture drone. This year, they just make a list. So our T16, T20, T30, and T40 are all on the list. Our farmers in U.S. can directly apply for this kind of use in the U.S. market, and uh, it's just uh, grew up very fast in the, in the market. And uh, you can see that for the Transport Canada, it's also basically the same thing. If we want to use, like our T10 is below 25 kilogram, actually DJI directly get a certification from the Transport Canada. So you can see here is our manufacturer name, DJI, and the model is Agras T10. And uh, there is like, you can use it in a, not only the uh, normal airspace, but also the controlled airspace. And also you can use it near people. Means that actually you can use it in a lot of field scenario. And here is actually if you use a drone more than 25 kilogram, you need to get an SFOC. So SFOC is basically the responsibility for the end users. But the point is that I think maybe a farmer cannot just tell the authorities what is the safety and what is the reliability design of the drone. So we also have on this. You can see we also make a blanket and we just uh, make all the things show to Transport Canada what is the safety design and what is the reliability test. So all the, in, all the things in blue actually we already show to Transport Canada and we have a really good uh, cooperation on that. Our farmers, they just need to tell the authority who is him and uh, where they want to use the agrass so that um, how is your team? Like, what is the training process? After that, they can just get the SFOC. So for this part, actually, it's like we reduce the half of a year's approval time to like one to two months. And uh, basically, we just do every drill before it launch. So make sure that the farmer, once the farmer want to use the drone directly, actually, they get the certification or actually, they've already get the approval. And here is a very, very good example for the regulation part. This is the ANEC from Brazil. So you can see, actually, they just 
complying all the regulations in Europe and also in North America. And they just think it's too complex to use such a drone because drone actually operates like three meter height, so it's really low. Actually, they think it's really, really safe to use the drone. So they just uh, only requires for a registration. They cancel the compulsory airworthiness, which may take like two to three years. But also, I have to say, actually, DJI voluntarily do the airworthiness there to make the authority and also the farmers make sure that our drone is quite safe and quite reliable. Okay, so talking about the aviation side and we have the other side about the chemical use. Uh, there is a project that in EU which requires the reduce of the chemical product use, which in 2030, actually they want to reduce half of the use of all the chemical product. So I think it's a very good policy because actually you can see here is in German, the vineyard is quite near with the river. So if there is like some uh, drift or there is like some chemical use and maybe just a disaster, the, uh, the, the, the river or make some pollution, but with some biological use actually is more safer. And I have to say it's a big chance for the drones because if you use chemical product, maybe just the three times, uh, it, it just uh, solve all the problem. But if you just uh, use a drone with the biological, uh, biological product, it may take like 10 to 12 times. So it will just uh, increase the use time for the drones. And here, I think a lot of people are very familiar with the left side, it's an area spring forbidden order. And uh, it was in 2009. Basically, in EU member countries, actually, they just uh, forbid all the area spring. And uh, I have to say, at that time, actually, there is no drone to use. So actually, uh, I think it's some, some kind of odd update for this regulation. Luckily, uh, yes, uh, last year, actually, they just uh, make a proposal on this. So you can see that they just uh, add the unmanned aircraft as a single, as a single uh, clause. And also, it's article that says if there is some certain conditions that you can use the drone. So I think this would be also pushed to a real regulation in the future and would be used in a better way. And here, uh, I also want to share good information. It's from Hungary. So Hungary just passed the first uh, potion for germs. It's used on cherry tree. And uh, you can see, actually, they just put the, on the label, on the, on the product label that can be used uh, on germs. So there is two kind of way to just uh, um, just to give the farmers the chance to use the chemical product on the drone. One is that just the registered on the official website like this, and the other is actually just to allow people to directly use the product. So you can see this is the chemical product used in the US. And uh, let me just... Okay, here, you can see in the engineering controls, there is a aircraft. So actually you can use it in the area spring for both ground and area spring because actually there is aircraft. So in the US, actually you can also use the drone to just spray. And here in Europe, actually a lot of uh, institutions and organizations, they do the drifting test which to just give some evidence to prove that the drone is quite safe. So you can see this is the drift test in Switzerland by the agroscope. Actually, the result is quite good. It's uh, the, in the vineyard, and they just spray some fungicide. So the result is that the drift distance is actually no more than five meter, which is quite good. And uh, after this drifting test, they just pronounced that actually in Switzerland, 
the product can be used as the ground machine. So the, it, it have the same level or same usage of the ground machines. Sorry, okay. Here is actually the drifting and FXC tests all around the world. So for the China, we just do different drifting tests in different location. And you can see actually we just not only collect the drift in the ground, but also there is some air collectors which can, can just get all the things just floating in the air to check whether it's quite safe. And uh, for the Australia, Professor Andrew Hewitt will just uh, give the introduction. And we also do an FXC test. We just uh, com compare the crop duster and also our drone in a corn field to check the FXC. And I have to say the drone just uh, get a good, really good result. And here is how we test our nozzle. So uh, actually you can see we can change the nozzle by the RPF M of the motor. You can get different droplet size. We just uh, first test it into the lab tree. And also you can see we also test the relationship with the single downwash flow. And uh, after that, we just uh, hand our drone in the iron structure to test the whole drone's downwash flow and the relationship with the droplet size. Check this. So with the whole drone's downwash flow, actually we can check about the droplet size. Okay, after all these tests, actually we just modify our remote controller. So this is the screen of our remote controller. Actually, our users can just directly choose from 50 to 500 micron on the droplet size, which let's say if you want to use the herbicide spray, maybe you need a really coarse droplet size. But if you want to use some pesticide, that you can just choose some fine droplet size. So basically, we just want our users to have the knowledge that they can just directly use this. And this is totally follow the ISO standard. And uh, it's basically the same with the usage of the ground machines. So that's some um, users, maybe they just uh, get used to the ground machine. And after that, they just uh, change to drill. So after that, they can just uh, directly use our drill. After all this drifting tests and some uh, effort on the policy, actually we want our users to also get the best practice. And uh, we also want our users can directly use all this information to make a better use on their field. So we just uh, publish the industry report every year. And in the re industry report, actually you can get all the policy trained, all the drifting tests, and also some best practice so that we can have a better solution for our end users. OK, so that's all of I want to say. And uh, thank you for everyone to come here. Thank you.